and welcome back uh my name is ryan selvi and i am your host today i am a motion designer myself and i'm really excited about the summer of sales uh hi moin good to see you thanks for tuning in also hello to randall katarina uh and ryan uh all hanging out in the chat both in youtube and on behance i'm really excited today because um today we'll be going through some of the plugins from the um day of sales uh, for the second day for week three. But I am very uh, fortunate to also be joined by Lloyd and Mike today, who we'll all be bringing in in just a moment. Um, but for those of you that don't know, uh, today is the second day of the third week of sales, um, the summer sales for um, AE scripts and AE plugins. Hello to Carl. Moin, I love you too. Uh, it is great to have you guys here. and. Um, just gonna run back a little ad for the plugins. There is a select source of plugins across the site. Uh, really great developers, both old and new, and they're really great plugins and add-ons and extensions for your workflow to speed up the way that you create things and also to elevate the things that you can create. And we'll be going over a little bit of them. You probably have heard of one of the main ones we'll be going over today, which is uh, joysticks and sliders, uh, which is pivotal to so many workflows and the creation of so many cool things that you've seen on Behance and Dribble and you know DeviantArt, uh, or even things that you see in in in, in common day uh, advertisements and uh, media that you consume. So, with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll the uh, official uh, branding for the week. There it is. And here I have the pleasure of introducing Lloyd. Uh, Lloyd is CEO and creator of AE Scripts. Thanks for joining along. Nice to be here. Yeah. Um, so you, how long have you had AE Scripts going on and running? Wow. Let's see. I think we unofficially launched around 2008. 
Oh, wow. So you've gone past yeah. your 10 years. Yeah, we did a major relaunch in 2012. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've been around for a long time. Yeah. So and even in that, you have 10 years almost on that, which is weird. to say. Exactly. But... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and so um, you were originally part of a motion design um, freelancing life and you worked for some pretty large clients and were in there with the you know, elbows deep, right? Yeah, I mean, actually, that's why um, I started a scripts because uh, as part of my freelancing work, I found myself needing little workflow enhancing tools or, or just plugins that, that didn't exist. And I just uh, I started learning how to program myself, but I also sort of leveraged my network of, you know, I was already friends with some plugin developers, some other script developers and just kind of said, hey, what do you guys think about getting this site together where we can make this stuff available? Uh, because back then there was no place to make that available, nothing from Adobe themselves or anywhere else. So we were kind of like the very first place to have a marketplace for these kinds of tools. And as they say, if you build, if you build it, they will come. So we built right. it. They've been coming. <laughs> no, for certain. I remember, I think, first hearing about it sometime in college, um, something along the sides of uh, just trying to add extra things. I think it might have even been for GIF Gun, which is what I got because I was uh, exporting GIFs out of After Effects. And um, I, I had to go through the whole process of like having the video be exported, then upload it to some site or third party uh, to then bring it down. And then the file was always so huge, then I have to go the way to start. So uh, my introduction to AE scripts and AE plugins definitely was um, just something of convenience. And it, it's been truthful all the way since those days. Also, hello to Abbas um, in YouTube and hello to Jack from Behance. It's great to have you guys here. Um, we appreciate you tuning in and saying hello. If you guys are also just here lurking, uh, by all means, feel free to uh, just hang out and uh, continue to enjoy what we've got going on for you. Today, we have um, a quick rundown of a few of the different types of uh, sales we have available on the site. You can easily get there by going to uh, aescripts.com. And um, right there on the banner, there should be a um, option for you to check out all the sales. And so I'm actually going to share my screen just so you guys can kind of see what it looks like. Um, and right there, we have a list of all the previous sales. You can even get a sneak peek of what's going to be in sale uh, number four, which will be at the beginning of August. This is the third week. Um, I already grabbed some of the deals from the previous weeks. But then we have a whole list of uh, creators that have sometimes like dozens, <laughs> Lloyd himself right there, uh, <laughs> dozens of extensions that you can go and explore. You can click into them, um, and each one has its own profile page. By the way, if you just go to the home page, it goes straight into the sale tab at the moment. So see how it says sale on the, on the left there. So everything that's on sale right now just defaults to be, you can just browse it all like that as well. Yeah, and you'll be able to see also all the types of deals that you're, that you're making while you're going off of it because um, we're here for day two. And so in just a moment, we'll be bringing in um, Mike from Joysticks and Sliders. Um, but first, I'm going to run a little bit of promo just to kind of get you guys going on uh, what we're looking at. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Thanks hey. for coming on the stream. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> Good to have you. Uh, I hope you liked a little uh, flair and enjoyment from the audience there at the last second there. I, I had fun looking for sound effects for all the <laughs> I made. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also going to bring Lloyd back in as well. Um, oh, I got to make it so your face isn't cut off entirely. Um, but thanks for coming on the show. Um, yeah. How long have you been uh, in the industry? Uh, what got you into it? And uh, how'd you get here? 
Uh, let's see. I started in the animation industry about 2001 when I graduated from school, and um, I worked in uh, animation mostly, um, like uh, worked on a Cartoon Network pilot and then worked into sort of character animation, cartoon stuff, uh, doing commercials. Um, it was in uh, around 2013-14 I moved into motion graphics. Um, and uh, around 2015, uh, I started learning to program and uh, and started building some of these tools. Um, so yeah, I think Parrot and EaseCopy were my first tools. They came out in 2015. Uh, Joysticks and Sliders, I think, was 2016 or 17. Um, and I have a tool called Squirrel, which came out um, a year or two later. Um, and I also collaborate with um, uh, Steve Kirby on Limber. Oh, wow. So you have a whole slew of uh, the portfolio of all different scripts. And so mm -hmm. you got into the animation industry first. And then what kind of prompted you to start creating and looking into um, the creation of these uh, plugins? Um, it, it was kind of around the, um, you know, economic uh, stuff of 2008, 2009, where uh, work started drying up. And I live in the Bay Area, and I knew that if I learned to code, that would open up more uh, opportunities for me. So Absolutely. Um, so I had a bit more time on my hands because the freelance work was a little um, more sparse. And uh, yeah, one of the best things I've done was learning to code, really. Um, uh, right now, I, I'm now um, working as a pipeline developer, so I'm not doing any actual graphics work really these days. Um, but I'm Oh, learning. really? How did you make that hop? Um, the, I um, really wanted to get some more professional coding experience after, um, and, and having these tools in my quiver were um, essential to giving me that opportunity. So um, I'm learning tons of Python and uh, ton, tons of stuff that I may be able to use in, in more tool development somewhere down the line, but um, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, I'm learning a lot every day. Yeah, it's quite the adventure. Uh, I mean, it's one thing to have the back end of different programs, but then as soon as you're like learning Python and all the other languages, it's just so it quickly adds up. It's always been so overwhelming for me. So I have a lot of respect for that. <laughs> and working with other people that know a ton more than you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been working on it super, for forever. Super humbling. Um, by the way, though, you do have your fans. You have some uh, some fans in the, the chat from Ryan Summers and Joel. Uh, both are big fans of Squirrel, and they say Squirrel's a really cool tool. Oh, cool, really smartly cool. made, and don't sleep on Squirrel. I was actually <laughs> um, checking out a little bit earlier today, and uh, it made me feel very unorganized in my own uh, right for um, <laughs> how I approach my files. Mm -hmm. So was this kind of something that you realized that you were running into an issue with um, your file organization, and then kind of created this. Yeah, I, I um, I've you know I've done a lot of After Effects, but I've also done quite a bit of 3D work. And in a 3D workflow, you can't really get anywhere without that hierarchy view of of what's in your scene. And um, with after working on joysticks and sliders and building all these more and more complicated rigs, I found that that flat timeline just wasn't enough to really navigate your, your composition for me. So um, it, it ended up being a really useful tool for me. Um, in my last motion graphics job, I, we were doing lots of price slates. So you were grouping text with into tags and moving them around. So you had all these groupings of things that had to be legible for other users. So um, uh, it, it became a really key tool for me. Now, is that specifically only for when you're approaching 3D work, or is that kind of now uh, evolved into whenever you're working on anything in After Effects? When, whenever I'm working on anything in After Effects, it's it's something just good to have handy. For me, it's if I'm opening up a new file that someone else has worked on to, to understand, get a better overview of how it's structured, um, it's handy for me. Also, you know, just finding stuff um, and, you know, tagging things and, and categorizing things um, is really helpful. Absolutely. If yeah. I can jump in on this, by the way, sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to mention that it's exactly what Mike just described, what really is the essence of the scripts and, and what make the best tools. So it, 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 was, it was a tool that was born out of his own need in the actual industry, right? Like in actually doing work, he found that he needed something to help him with the specific thing, and so he created the tool. And those, you know, we get a lot of we we get a lot of tool submissions, and we we decline a lot of submissions because there's a lot of people who are like, 
oh, what, what, let, let me think of something to make. I'll make a blur plugin or something. But it's the tools like what Mike just described that really make the best tools. And it's what the genesis of a scripts was in the uh, at the beginning. Because don't forget that at the end of the day, Adobe, you know, all the all the After Effects creators, they are actually programmers themselves. They are not users. They do have a lot of quality engineers that that that, that are familiar with it, but but at the core, they're all programmers. And it's like the user that has this like real world need. Those are the best tools. So. But yeah, that's that first world experience. Um, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually also going to, just since we're talking about it, I'm also going to run the um, little advertisement for Squirrel as well. So here we go. I do want to say they are very cute uh, little advertisements. <laughs> Did you make them yourselves? Yeah, yeah. Those are um, those are fun little projects doing those videos, and and um, those are like my only little forays into making music. Um, yeah. Oh, you made the music too. Yeah, yeah. Get out. That's awesome. It's so beepy and boppy. It's very. Uh, <laughs> it's it's got a vibe to it. So I'm excited <laughs> about it. Yeah. Um, but I know you want to talk a little bit about joysticks and sliders today. I know that's probably mm -hmm. probably your most popular one. Am, am I right at, at assuming that? Uh, it's my most popular um, uh, licensed plugin. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a new price plugin, Ease Copy, which which is probably more popular. I, I get a lot more downloads of that one. Um, I use Ease Copy all the time. Uh, that's yeah, the one. Yeah. I've dabbled with joysticks and sliders, but I have relied on Ease Copy ever since I got it. Was it also? I think it was also name your price earlier this year as well, and I think that's when I grabbed it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. it has saved me it's, it's so many times. So. Yeah, it's it's always name your own price, um, and yeah, I, I always it's it's some people do throw some money in. It's always wonderful to see that, and I mm -hmm. very much appreciate that. How many million dollar purchases have you gotten? <laughs> none, none. Oh, but, okay, all right. But because you know, if since we we have the sale, if you wanted to name your price. To be like two hundred dollars, you can yes. actually get for one hundred fifty bucks. So that's oh. a great savings. <laughs> people um, do people do actually pay more than the suggested price, believe it or not. It happens sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That gives me a lot of faith in humanity. Honestly, I can't say that I've ever <laughs> yeah. gone above it, but um, <laughs> it's nice to know that someone out there is picking up the slack. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, did you have any, um, uh, I know, I know you said you wanted to talk a little bit about, um, different ways that you can link, um, some of the assets to main controllers and, um, yeah. getting the most out of your plugin. So did you want to, um, like share your screen or anything to, to get through sure. some um, of uh, the plugin? I'm going to start. Well, uh, yeah, what I'd like to do is there, there are a couple things that, um, are not in my documentation that I found it really been useful in recent years. Um, first, I'll probably go over uh, essential graphics uh, or, or the, uh, uh, let's see, share screen, do, 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 do. Here we go. Okay. Um, so, in if uh, and this is mostly for people who are already uh, experienced with joysticks and sliders, for those who aren't, I'm going to give a very basic overview of, of what it does. This is my sort of hello world test of joysticks and sliders uh, to show you how to start rigging. Um, and it takes a, a little bit of training in that you have to have your first origin uh, key pose on your very first frame. And this can be as many layers, properties as you want, as long as they consistently have a, a pose frame on each uh, keyframe. So then you want to advance to one next frame and paste your origin pose and then change it up slightly. And then go another cheap keyframe, paste your origin and adjust it again. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm creating a right pose, a left pose, and then I'm gonna create an up pose and then I'll create a down pose. And then with that layer selected, I can create a new joystick controller uh, and name it something. And this controller here now interpolates between all those keyframes for you. Um, 
and when you add that up with a whole bunch of layers and a whole bunch of properties, you can end up with some really intricate um, rigs that can be controlled with just one position controller. Um, so that uh, we also have sliders. I'll go into that a little bit more later. Um, but one uh, treat that we have with joysticks and sliders is this, is this move to parent composition, uh, which allows you to nest this um, this rig into a pre-comp and then move the controller into the parent composition. And what that does that's good is it allows you to work from a parent more clean timeline. Um, but what is not great about it is it creates these cross composition expressions that can break if you want to duplicate your rig or import it into another project. Um, it, it can be a, a stability point for you. So um, when Adobe introduced the essential graphics panel, um, that became a huge opportunity for people to organize the rigs and use them, reuse them in a process, in a project in a better way. So I have a, let's see. Uh, here we go. This is a rig that, that I built just for testing some stuff. This is a, a head rig um, that's got a whole bunch of controls, all the joysticks and sliders. Um, he's got a torso controller. He's also got these um, eyebrow controllers. And it's really cool to see how something that is just a series of layers, like someone who I've always wanted to dabble in 3D, but I have always kind of talked myself out of it just because it's very daunting. Um, with joysticks and sliders, it's really cool how you can create or even dissect a 2D image and then have it come to life by just giving it parameters from left to right. It's amazing how much your mind kind of just fills in the blanks to be like, oh, that's 3D, when in reality yeah. you're just moving how things are related to one each other. Yeah, um, so if I go into the, so let's say I wanna use this guy in multiple places in a project or even in multiple places in one composition. Um, instead of using that move to parent controller uh, option, I'm going to take the, um, the head controller and find its position. And um, let's see, oh, I do have that in there and then I can add the proper to the essential graphics. And then in a parent composition where I have him living. So this is the pre-comp here. And these are two just empty joysticks here. They're not rigged to anything yet, but uh, here now in the essential graphics, you have this head position and you can control him. Uh, let me just reset this. I am getting the live demo thing. Let's see, maybe I have to reintroduce him because since I just added him. It's all about showbiz, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, this did work. This did work when I did it a little earlier, huh? No, don't I know it. I've <laughs> had so many times where uh, my computer just decides to freak out on me while you know I'm what? on the spot. Hey, I put the origin in there and not the actual position of the joystick and that's doesn't do me any good. So <laughs> that's what happened here. So um, let's add this. That's the correct uh, property. Um, uh, and then in the parent layer, now I can bring my guy in and I can animate his Hooray, okay, now we're now we're cooking with gas. And now what I can do in that parent layer is pick whip that controller to this empty joystick. And now I have a joystick rig controlling the um, pre-comped head, which is, and what's great about using essential properties is now I can bring in another rig here. And this guy is, animates independently from the first guy. Sorry, that's a little small. I'm using a, a very tiny wake on which doesn't have very much resolution. So, <laughs> um, do you generally uh, work on a wake on when you're working on anything like motion? I know that you're not necessarily in motion day to day now, but yeah. Um, um, when I was, I had a. Um, this is a Cintiq right here. Um, 
because I, I did a lot of drawn animation work, but in motion graphics, just a Wacom tablet was really handy for me. Um, I got to work really fast using that. Um, and it saved my my wrist from the repetitive motion and everything. Yeah, um, I had to get a, um, end up getting one of these like weird looking mice just because they, like it stands up vertically, just because it was hurting my wrist otherwise. Yeah, this oh, guy. Oh yeah, we have the same the one. Anchor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, um, just to get back to not to overlook what Mike just showed, um, I think what he just showed is insanely powerful. He essentially showed you how to create a, a sort of like a character library, right? He was able to bring, he just created one one rig. And you can also, what's really cool about the essential uh, graphics panel is that you can link anything to it. So he could, for example, change the colors or, you know, put different, uh, you can, you can, you can um, link capacity. So for example, if you wanted to have different noses and change them based on just turning it on and off with the opacity. So he could just have one comp with one rig and then have a whole audience of characters. And that's like insanely amazing and insanely powerful. And, and that's, that's a, a beautiful example of showing how one of our tools combined with a new thing that Adobe introduced after joysticks and sliders came out, but it was able to adapt, you know, Mike dated it so that it would work. And I, this is huge, I think. Uh, so yeah, and, and to add on to that, um, joysticks and sliders, as you can see, it's it's animating these live um, paths. Um, before After Effects 2018, that couldn't be done. So joysticks and sliders had a path baking function, which um, was, not as nice as it has become now when Adobe added this functionality to allow you to write expressions onto path properties. So them unlocking that really unleashed much more potential for, for my tool. So um, that was that was another thing when Adobe opened something like that, uh, all us tool builders just start foaming at the mouth sometimes. I will also say that it's really admirable and it's something that I've noticed a lot with um, all of the plugins that I get from AE scripts and AE plugins is um, kind of the lifetime license that comes with the majority of them and just having constant updates. And even though Adobe is constantly updating their program because ever since they switched over to the subscription model where you constantly get those updates, it's really nice to also in turn get new features and new updates that come along um, as the programs uh, it also evolved in a parallel, which is cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I've sort of found that um, uh, there are always new people picking up After Effects and there are always new potential customers. So the worry of saturating the market and just, ha and you know, there's no need to, no real need to do a subscription thing if you have all these new people coming in, um, as long as you keep your tool alive uh, and, and let people know that it's still supported. Um, then uh, that that's is just great, and the people who have it are very happy to own it perpetually. Yeah. And another, and another thing, uh, just to also mention that we are also it's a small community, right? And and that includes the developers of After Effects. Um, so we 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 usually end up, like I said, finding these little needs, and then Adobe ends up then deciding, oh, is this something that we should add? You know, and then like in like the case of being able to do right paths, I'm sorry, expressions to path points, um, it's something that it's like a full symbiotic circle between we, we fill in the gaps, then they see the greater potential of it. Um, it's great. And, and we're really we're really close with the Adobe After Effects team. Um, so it's, it's always something. And, you know, of, of course, there's different tools that there are different complexities and some need more updating than others. But yeah, we always try to, keep them up to date as possible. And the whole philosophy from the beginning was to, we are all users ourselves. So we wanted to create a place where it was run the way we would expect it to run. And that includes, yeah, no no like games uh, with uh, licensing or, or, or e-marketing and all that nonsense. Microtransactions on microtransactions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, no one, no one's got time for that. Yeah. Um, it, it's always put a lot of work into speeding up their expression engine, which has been super helpful as well as, um, uh, text, uh, being able to do much more, uh, expression work on text layers. Um, so yeah, they, they really do listen to the developers. 
Uh, I also want to say uh, hello to uh, Annika in the chat. Thanks for joining. Glad to have you here. And also um, hello to Kubertoy. And um, it's Kubertoy saying, uh, there I was creating new project import comp each time I used a character with a parented controller. So hopefully we have some new learnings today and uh, people who are recently buying the product or people who even have had it for a while and didn't know that they could do it um, are learning that they can. If you've ever used if you've ever used true comp duplicator, that was our solution before Essential Graphics Panel existed, right? Um, yeah. it, it created a complete copy of your entire comp tree um, to be able to to do what he just did in two seconds. It used to be a much more complicated involved thing. So, yeah. it's just so funny how we have the workarounds to get to something that eventually kind of can get be baked in or can later become part of just the regular workflow. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do want to take a time just because I was saying how much it does mean to me. Um, I, I do want to also include um, a little example of when we're using the ease copy. Um, basically, a lot of times you go in and you'll experience that uh, you have maybe something moving. Um, we're going to use in this case like a I just made a random circle. It doesn't have to be the same thing even. Um, and you can have it move from one side to the other and I have curves on it. Um, Right now, it's only two layers, so it makes things a lot easier to kind of go in. You could go and you could probably find the way that the position is um, affected with curves. But the beauty of ease copy is even if it's not the same property or the same shape, all you have to do is you can just go in, um, you go to, to ease copy, it'll be a JS uh, X bin, and you just copy the two, you hit copy. Um, I'm going to show you guys without it before I actually paste it. Um, but you'll see the difference of the ease. This is kind of going like this. Um, you'll go over here and then you'll hit uh, paste the ease value and then it'll copy and paste it. So then now the two of them now are on the same ease. And I cannot stress how many times that has saved my butt uh, through mm -hmm. giant complicated projects where I've had no organization or you know I have to hop back into something that I haven't touched in like two months and now the client wants an update. Um, I can't recommend that one enough. And like you said, it is name your price. Um, so for those of you that um, want to hop in there and make that four thousand dollar purchase, yeah, it's all yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, ease now, copy, did, Gareth. Ease copy. Mm -hmm. Ease copy. Oh, what did I say? Did I switch it up? No, no, no. Uh, Gareth was just asking. Oh, gotcha. Oh. Yeah. Um, and I can drop a link to that also in the um, in the chat yeah, as I, well. I'm doing. Um, I'll well, also. Perfect. I'll add that ease copy also um, integrates with KBAR, so you can just assign it to a button, and it also comes with standalone scripts that you can assign to keyboard shortcuts. So you can use it without needing even the UI there. You can just have it uh, shift C, shift V, and uh, you can assign it, and it works really great that way too. Oh, when you said when you mentioned KBAR, what's what's KBAR? KBAR is a uh, toolbox uh, manager. Um, uh, what's the, yeah, I can, I can jump in. Basically, it's a, yeah, like you know, uh, 3D apps have like these cool toolbars that you can assign custom buttons to make whatever yeah. specific function that you want. So that's essentially a, a version of that for After Effects. And one of the cool things, one of the cool things about the A Script sort of community is that you know we have lots of developers doing different things. And one of the cool things that KBar did is they created an API that allowed other script developers or other plugin developers like Mike to create a version of their tool that works within the button. So you can make a button KBAR for a specific function within EaseCopy. And so the KBAR developer wrote up an API documentation is like, this is how you do it. Mike sees that and then he just wires up his plugin to do that. And then everybody benefits from that. Yeah, oh, that's perfect. That's awesome. I suppose, wow. Yeah, well, one of the, the common gripes with After Effects users is having all these panels and, and having to navigate through. So this, if you have a tool that's simple enough, um, you can sort of replace the UI with a button in yes. the K-Bar and it just saves you a lot of space. Very yeah, cool. so that's actually one of, you know, real estate, screen real estate has become such a premium in After Effects that a lot of people and I mean, you know, I'm the curator, right? I'm the one who's always accepting the tools. And one of the main things I make developers work on is reducing their real estate, their screen real estate for their panels. But sometimes you have a lot of functions for your panel, but somebody's just interested in one or two of your functions. 
And so if if the developer uses the KBAR API, and mind you, if if there's a tool that is not doing that, make a feature request and we can make it happen. I, most of the things that we do are driven by users requesting things. So, um, so yeah, so you can make it so that just a specific function can be accessed directly and then you just make one button in the KBAR. Your KBAR is essentially your own custom designed button panel where you can make your own buttons and, and, and assign them to whatever you want. Basically so. like a stream deck, but on your computer. Right? Yeah, it's essentially and a stream deck. But you know, and it, and you can basically make it do all the built-in After Effects functions. But you can also have it control other scripts. You can have it run scripts. You can do. It's super powerful, super customizable. It's super powerful. Yes. Um, also, I'm about to do a little bit of the uh, the unforgivable, but I, I I pulled up a few um, examples in uh, on Dribble. Uh, sorry, Behance, uh, where there are people that have uploaded different riggings that they've had with joysticks and sliders. And I just really want to kind of emphasize and show to you guys the amount of complexity that you can incorporate into these characters. And just keep in mind that these are all 2D that are now yeah. kind of essentially, I mean, this one's oh, the one that blows my yeah, mind, yeah, has yeah, always yeah. blown my mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that is impressive. And I do I want to make sure way, I... we we posted that on our Instagram channel, and I think that was the most viewed uh, Instagram post of that year. I'm not surprised. I that, mean, like broke the Instagrams. I still don't fully understand it, um, <laughs> but know, the idea that you can just make that in that's just by having different parameters and linking to it. Are great. I do want to make sure that I call out artist uh, Matthew uh, Dredrujewski. Uh, Fraser Davidson and Svetlana uh, Konchiva. Um, uh, but but to answer your question, I have no idea how they did this. Mike actually showed you in a very simple way, right? He created four key poses for that up and down, left and right thing. So here, the, this guy, you just create the, the extreme pose, which is he's looking all the way up. And then the, you know, you basically, it's like back at, you know, if you've ever watched a traditional animation documentary for Disney or whatever, there were the, the, the actual, there were the actual artists who would create the key. That's why they're called keyframes because they would create the key the animation. And then there was the in-betweeners who created the in-between. So, so in a way, joystick and sliders is, is the in-betweeners. You create the key poses and then Joystick and sliders does the rest for you, which is pretty cool through through code, which is super awesome. Yeah, all through automation too, and it also doesn't wreak havoc on your system either. Like when I had played around with it, it didn't really slow everything down. Um, and I, I kind of mentioned this yesterday, but I don't have the strongest graphics card, so it's always nice to know which plugins kind of you need to go make a snack for, and which other ones you can just power through. <laughs> Yeah. By the well, way, it, it, it used to wreak havoc on your system. This is what oh, it's just twenty twenty one now. <laughs> this is what Mike was referring to when Adobe uh, made some really key changes that really allowed um, joysticks and sliders to 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 do what it was meant to do. Because a lot of the, the a lot of the tools that we create are really kind of we find really weird, tacky ways of making things work that After Effects was never designed to do. And then they pay attention and they go, oh, OK. And then they're like, how can we make this work better? You know, so it's, uh, this, that's a perfect yeah. example of that. I mean, you, you can push joysticks and sliders to, to make your computer cry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, if, if you so please. <laughs> if you so please, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, a, a couple pointers to, to streamline your rigs is to rig do path rigging sparingly or, or keep the point count light in paths that you rig. If you can do anything with with other um, numerical properties that will evaluate much faster. Um, and of course, the number of rigs you have in your, your comp that will make a difference. Absolutely. Um, and then I also want to make sure that we also shine a little bit on some of the um, last few ones that you've had. I know you said you're working on uh, the co-creation with Limber, and then we talked a little bit about Squirrel and Ease Copy. But did you want to touch base at all about um, Parrot, Wobblebox, or Limber? Um, let's see. Well, Limber I, is not in the sale this week, but um, that's one I'm, I'm still very proud of, and uh, been having a great uh, working relationship with Steve on that one. Um, he he sort of does a whole lot of the documentation and and um, and building the base rigs, and and we sort of work together to convert that into a script. Um, and yeah, we've been doing this for a few years now. Um, and we are working on updates for that. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's a very versatile limb rigging tool that lets you um, create very simple rigs or pretty complicated rigs. Um, it also take borrows a lot of stuff from um, 3D character rigging workflows like switching between IK and FK and blending between those, um, matching an IK rig setup to a FK rig setup so you can swap between them in the same pose. Um, and there's also, yeah, the rig and pose allowing you to build uh, limber rigs out of your own artwork. Um, so you don't just have that standard, you're not restricted to that standard tapered limb. You can, you can really style it however you want. Yeah, it's funny when, um, I, I don't know how much the mass population uh, notices this, but um, whenever you kind of get one of these plugins or you get something, um, you start like noticing it in other places. And there was definitely an era with, um, yeah, as character rigging was becoming far out of just the character rigging tools, uh, you could start saying like, oh, I think they used rubber hose there. I think they used limber over there. Um, and so it's really nice to be able to create a piece of your own artwork and still be able to add the technology to it to um, make it possible uh, yeah. to really bring life to your pieces. Yeah, a lot of our, our recent updates were, were, you know, trying to get it from um, the layout artist into the animator's hand and animating as fast as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so then you also have Parrot. You said Parrot was your first one. Now this one's also... Um, Parrot is my uh, first on one. It is on sale. Yeah, it is um, a, a pretty simple tool, but I found it... I was doing a lot of motion graphics work where um, I was doing lots of lower thirds, lots of text animation, and it usually involves very same, same, same types of motion. Um, and it ended up being just tons of copied keyframes. And if you wanted, if the art director wanted it to happen a little sooner or a little faster or have more cushioning, you'd have to do it for every iteration. So this is sort of a simple tool to let you connect a bunch of similar layers to a master uh, layer and offset those with markers and and store and replay actions with with uh, layer markers. That's great because a lot of times, like I said, when I when I once you get too heavy and then you have to copy and paste, it just takes one of them being off for the rest of them to look off as well. So yeah. it's kind of nice to be able to have this master control over multiple objects. Yeah, yeah. And so this one is uh, generally uh, twenty nine ninety nine, but you can get it for twenty two forty nine mm -hmm. uh, for the next few days, which is exciting. This makes it feel like we're on the uh, home shopping network. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I can also run. I can also run this. Amazing. <laughs> that makes it a little bit more exciting. Um, but I do want to make sure that we do call out because whereas it's always <laughs> these are always great prices and they're always great deals, um, but. These sales weeks in in particular are really good ways, especially if you're a student out there and you're you know trying to build up your your library, but you don't necessarily have that full time job yet, or you know, freelancing gig. These will help you get more jobs. I promise. <laughs> Although, don't hold me legally to that. I guess. <laughs> you know, I, if I can say something about the sales, because remember how I said we we built that we're all users ourselves, and so I always thought that sales were gimmicks. You know, I'm like. If you can afford to sell it for this price, why don't you sell it at that price all the time? So we really set off to, I don't know, you know, for people who haven't been around that long, it used to be that After Effects plugins were in the thousands of dollars, all of them. It was like very inexpensive market. And of course, you know, the market was a lot smaller and there's a lot of reasons for that. But we decided like we should just price everything as affordable as possible at all times. And that should be the end of it. No games. And for the very, for the many of the first years, we never had sales because again, I didn't want you to feel like, oh, I need this tool, but I should wait because it's not on sale yet. I'm going to wait for it. So I just, I didn't want that. But, um, but then after a few years, we realized that there's just, there's a certain group of people, or there are maybe some tools that you just won't buy unless you get, it's like some psychological thing that happens. And I, I'm guilty of it too. I mean, I, I, I have the same thing. And so we find that by having limited sales, that are well sort of advertised, we do tap into something. I don't know if it's some part of your brain or a certain group of people, like you said, students or something, uh, but people like like sales. So uh, so yeah, the, the, 
the idea here, and then uh, they're also the reason we, we're doing the summer sale the way we're doing it, where there's certain tools that are on sale on certain week, is because we really want to, because we sell so many kind of like what I would call boring workflow tools, like Parrot is a perfect example of something that you were like, oh, that looks useful, but I would have, but you would never see that on in an Instagram post that I was done with Parrot, you know, or like East Copy, I really try to like, I feel like East Copy is probably used on everything you've ever seen on Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard to know that for sure, you know, and so what we try to do in the summer sale is kind of highlight some tools that you might not otherwise have come across. Um, so yeah, so it's not about it being on sale, it's more about us trying to, again, listen to the community and, and give them what we think they want. I don't know, I'm kind of all about sales. <laughs> Surprisingly, I couldn't find a really good party horn air horn. So when I did that, I actually had to take an air horn and loop it like three times side by side. <laughs> That's great. So I just want to at least be acknowledged for my hard work on that. <laughs> um, I do know that Mike... <laughs> oh yeah right <laughs> oh my god that's so funny <laughs> <laughs> um mike i do know that you are very graciously here on your lunch break so i want to make sure you have some time to chow down before getting back into work <laughs> um was there anything else you wanted to touch on um or you'd like to sell before uh heading <laughs> off uh i think uh that is about it yeah that is good yeah Hi. All right, cool. Well, yeah. Make sure you guys check out. Um, we have an entire page just dedicated to Mike um, over on the page uh, on AU Script. If you go through and you look into the sales, you'll be able to find all of his work. Um, and you said you didn't have anything in the works, right? Because you're too busy on all the uh, Python stuff, right? Uh, well, I, I'm just working with Steve, um, doing some updates to Limber. Um, I've been, I'm constantly sort of chewing on my tools to to. Um, Think about new updates. I, I have some stuff with joysticks and sliders that I'm working on. But I, one big project I want with joysticks and sliders is to update the documentation on all the learning videos because so much has changed since it's released. Um, Absolutely, an amazing amount of work has to be done on documentation and tutorials. Um, that's probably maybe even 50 per, 50 percent of the whole um, process of, of making one of these tools. And we should also mention that. Um, if you ever have to open a support ticket, which is where you go aescripts.com forward slash contact, you're you're getting a co direct connection to Mike and the other developers. So not only not only if you have a problem or an issue, but if you have a new idea or a feature request, it's a perfect place for you to do it. Um, just go in there, even if you just want to say uh, thank you, whatever. Just it's a direct contact to to all the developers, uh, and it's a great place. And you'd be surprised of how. How, how many features and in, in the tools were a direct response to somebody requesting it, so. Absolutely. Um, well, cool, well, thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate having you on here. Um, I hope you have uh, some great sales through this week. And yeah, uh, yeah. I hope everyone checks out um, Joysticks and Sliders, Squirrel, Parrot, Wobblebox, Ease Copy, and Limber. Good luck yeah. with learning all the new code. All right, thanks guys. All right. See you guys have around. A good one. Thank you very Bye. much. Thanks. All right, and then there were two. Um, <laughs> I did want to, once again, just pop on over and take a look at some of the different things that we have um, up we, for we sale. We need one of those counters, like, you know, 2,000 sold. Oh, oh yeah, yeah right? Come on, we come have on. callers <laughs> waiting and just have people picking up the phone. Yeah, we, we need, like, stock me. footage of people, like, on the phones. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, no, it is great. I, like like Lloyd was saying, it is a really great group of creators that are um, also artists themselves and have experience in um, the issues that you're also running into. One that I recently was actually looking at um, was by Let's Motion, and that's called Stock Search Pro. And this kind of really helps you um, advance having free stock uh, within your project. So. Over the last few years, we've noticed a real big uh, influx of things like Unsplash or um, a flurry of like Pexels where you can get free photos by artists that are just looking for accreditation or they're even just looking to support the community. Um, on sale right now is this uh, native uh, in product in After Effects and Photoshop in Premiere and it's called Stock Search Pro and it will allow you to get access to icons, to GIFs, to um, uh, photos and videos, and it's all built in its own panel. Um, 
And so I just wanted you guys to check this out a little bit. And another example of you can obviously do all of this manually, right? You can always go to the websites and download it and then import it and stuff. But this just saves you time. A lot of the things we do, a lot of people like to say, oh, you know, this the, this should be built in or this or you can do this manually. But if you really add up all the minutes that these tools shave off your day, you can either go home early or spend more time on what really matters, which is like making your design better or making your animation better or massaging those keyframes uh, and then using East copy to copy that perfectly massaged keyframe. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, to your point, like a lot of these are, are necessarily ones that'll just kind of make your life easier. Um, but for these in particular too, it's, it's really hard when you're, just so inundated with having to go and use so many different sources to find just one video of a cat. Um, this is really nice because it puts it all in one place and it's easily accessible. Um, and it imports it and links it correctly. And, you know, it's like, yeah. It'll keep your file nice and organized. You won't have a bunch of missing links at the end of it, um, which I have ran into with other things, uh, not to be named. But um, <laughs> this is good because it'll actually go and... Um, uh, be within your file. I will say that uh, while the sales are only this week, you can always go on and um, on all the product pages, there always is normally as a try right there. And that'll give you a download link. It'll normally have um, like a watermark or something on there until you register it. But if you're worried about um, just buying something off the rack without trying it, um, uh, AE scripts and plugins gives you the opportunity to go and try the plugins before you have to download them. And we're always obviously very interested in making sure, like we only exist because we want to make uh, animators and designers lives easier. So if there's ever something that you're not happy with, we're always there to try to do our best, including refunding if necessary, uh, you know, to make it work for you how you want it to work. Because sometimes, you know, we realize that trials are not uh, long enough or, or whatever, complete enough. So. Absolutely. Um, and since actually, since we have Lloyd here um, today, I, I think uh, I'll also be joining us throughout the week. But uh, I wanted to kind of also open up the floor to anyone in the chat. If you guys had any questions about any of the plugins that are on sale, if you wanted, um, I mean, Lloyd goes and he reviews all of these. So he knows them very well. Um, and so if you have any questions about something or you want feedback on um, maybe a plugin that is on sale, feel free to throw it in the chat and we can um, address it real quick. I also wanted to pull it up. I know I talked about it yesterday, but for those of you that are joining us uh, today, I just want to bring in the importance of uh, the ease of access for uh, the AE plugins and AE scripts um, downloader, which is really cool. Mm. It's really easy to just log in, you download it, you log in, and then it'll automatically have all of the things that you have bought um, or even downloaded. There are some free things that are on aescripts.com uh, if you do some digging and uh, you can go and it'll all pop up and all you have to do is you just click. Um, it'll have your license and it'll have so your install. All you have to do is click install, you click license, you click activate um, and it's good to go. It's also important to note that you can um, highlight more than one and you can install them all at the same time as well, which makes downloading um, and uninstalling very. And if you turn on notifications, it'll give you native notifications when there's any updates, by the way. Oh, perfect. Because um, as you can see, like on here, I have uh, Pen Pal, which needs to be uh, updated, it looks like, but for whatever so, reason. So whenever that, whenever that was posted, um, mm -hmm. you know, and the next time you log in, you would get a little desktop. Or if you have it running in the background, it would give you a desktop notification saying, hey, new version of Pen Pal, would you like to install it? Yeah, and that way, because obviously, as we were kind of talking about um, how the uh, programs are constantly being updated. A lot of times these plugins have to also go along with those updates. And um, the developers are really good at going on and making sure that there's updates very quick to coincide with the updates of the Adobe programs. Um, and so sometimes though it's really pivotal for you to update uh, and, and install these updates as you update your own programs. Um, and so that's really good to have. Um, Ali says, I love Coco Color Worker. Worked uh, with it today. It's awesome. Um, By the way, that's from the same developer as Stock, uh, Stock Search Pro. We oh, is it that. really? Yeah, we just released it yesterday. That's probably you. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw it pop up yesterday, yeah. and I didn't. I didn't recognize it, which I was like, I was like, did I just miss this during the uh, the initial uh, overview, or is this like the one that was? I, I think I think we launched it during yesterday's live stream. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Um, and so that's a really good color coordinator and helps you um, 
create palettes and uh, apply them to your projects in easy, like quick clicks. Um, there, there's something to be said about having something that you create and then being able to cycle through different palettes that you um, established. And that, to my knowledge, is kind of where that really shines. Um, and that's got a cool. cool. Uh, it's got uh, it's got two really cool, unique features that I have never seen before. Um, which is a uh, it has a contrast checker as well as a colorblind simulator, which is oh, that's great. It lets you see your design uh, as a colorblind person would see it, and not that that's a target of the population you need to be sort of concerned about. But uh, you know, when you're designing something, you want to make sure it's almost like I don't know if you have ever heard of the car speaker test for for like recording artists that. You know, you, you're done in the fancy studio with the fancy speakers and then you take the tape and you pop it in your car stereo and then you listen to it there. And they're like, yeah. if it sounds good in your car stereo, then you know it's going to sound good for everybody. So kind of right. think of that within like color, you know, if it looks good to a colorblind person, then it's going to look really good to somebody who can see all the colors. So it's you know, it'll also good. just help with accessibility across the board too. Yeah, of like, course, you know, make of course, sure that but, everyone has best pop possible experience. Um, yeah, but but you know, this is what's cool about, you know, tools for accessibility are actually good for everybody, right? Like, absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, so. Cool. Oh, so I'm actually gonna um, queue up the, uh, the promotional clip that we have for uh, the Coco Color uh, Coworker, which as you said, is also by the same creators, um, Let's Motion, which have a flurry of options, um, which I'm also going to include here in the chat for you guys, just for you guys to be able to um, access it. I do also want to say that um, I see that Ivan is here saying that he just bought Signal, Autofill, Flow, and very happy with all the purchases as always. Um, Ivan wants to know, what about updates on plugins with Next After Effects multi-core render? Oh, yeah. I can, I can um, answer that. Um, sure. You're probably just referring to multi-thread rendering, which is, a, I believe it's in the current beta of After Effects. So remember earlier, I was saying we, we work very closely with the After Effects team. We are part of the beta testing um, thing. All the developers are sort of, uh, you know, part of the, the, the thing. So when, when After Effects, especially this particular update is a, what we would call a low level update. They, they've had to really re-engineer After Effects from a very low, low uh, sort of core of After Effects, which affects uh, all of After Effects, but it also affects plugins. So, all the plugin, all the plugin, all the plugin developers are are aware of this change. Uh, it does require recompiling and re-engineering of plugins. So, I uh, don't expect every plugin, and this doesn't go just for us. I mean, Red Giant and uh, Video Copilot and all of the all of the plugin um, developers will need to redo their plugins to take advantage of this, but but it's a very good thing for all users. One of the main complaints about After Effects is that it never really was truly multi-threaded. It, it, you could duplicate, it would duplicate the processes and so it would have parallel processes. So it would be like two people working at the same time, but it wasn't efficient because they were kind of like not aware of what each other was doing. So multi-threading is everybody, is, there's a central controller and it's like jobs that are saying, you know, if you've ever seen a 3D renderer update little pixels at a time and stuff like that, that's multi-threading uh, in action. So yeah, uh, it's uh, we're aware of it. We're working on it. Don't expect it to all, all of them be updated immediately, but it's definitely going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the technology is constantly also throwing us curveballs with the idea of like the new M1 chips, I know. Um, they're also yeah. <laughs> creating some hiccups for some stuff. So as with anything else, um, keeping everybody on their feet. Um, but yeah, anyway, here is the um, Coco Color Coworker uh, advertisement for you guys. Coco is the color coworker in your editing workflow. Coco is a color palette, gradient maker, contrast and color checker, palette from image creator and more. Access thousands of beautiful and trendy palettes or create your own to add to your library. The library makes it easy to manage all your palettes, easy to search and customize. You will love being able to make color palettes from images and footage. Generate or browse beautiful color combinations for your designs. Discover tons of designer created color gradients. Find your favorite and apply it with a single click. Coco comes with thousands of beautiful hand-picked solid colors. This is a great way to start any project. 
Simply choosing colors, however, is not enough. You need to make sure your colors work correctly. Use the contrast checker and colorblind simulation to make sure your colors work in all situations. Coco the Color Coworker. Enjoy working with color in After Effects. Such it's a it's a very uh, efficient and all encompassing overview video, which is which is great to see. Um, obviously, uh, the limits of that are easily uh, understated, but color goes such a long way in all these projects. So um, that's normally forty nine ninety nine, I believe, and um, I think it's all the way down to I think like thirty six or something, thirty seven. It is as you guessed it. Amazing. 25% oh, off. We're not up to 25% off. It, it is 25% off. Oh, it, it is 25% off. But not everything is 25% off, though, right? All the stuff on the summer sale is 25% off, yeah. Everything is 25% off. Then so all the stuff that's participating in the sale is 25% off, yeah. Well, then I need to create all new animations yeah. and start yeah. from scratch. So I mean, you're not lying. It is up to 25%. It is up to. All it's just off, so. Right. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, Gareth says, people know uh, Adobe Color Theme switches off tomorrow. Oh, what do you mean by that? Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Look at that. Oh, well, then. There you go. See, I, there you go. We, we, <laughs> we are always saving the day. Right? It's uh, one of those things where it's like I use libraries a lot, but for whatever reason, libraries and After Effects don't have the best relationship. Um, it really seamlessly works with Illustrator and Photoshop, but whenever I'm working, especially with colors and After Effects, I have a, a hard time using the libraries. Yeah. There's a question um, about wanting to know about geo layers, but uh, yeah, it's geo layers is not uh, part of this week's sale. So we, we, but you can go on the website. It, it essentially, it's, it's a, a, another example of something that would be extremely difficult and tedious to do by hand. Uh, but it just lets you, you know, like if you've ever used Google Earth or, or, or even just Google Maps, in a way you can use satellite view and just zoom into a certain region and, and it's just has it. So it basically allows you to tap into all of these mapping services in After Effects and you can zoom into specific areas and it pulls in just the panels that you need and, then, and it can finalize your animation so you can just render the parts that you need. So that's super powerful. Which is um, really miraculous. Is that one of the best sellers that's normally on the site? I feel like I see it a lot. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a popular, I mean, it's not just popular, but it's also used probably by most TV networks and uh, YouTube channels that you are seeing. So uh, it's the engine of almost every, any, any, if, if a map's being created in After Effects, you can be guaranteed 99% chance it was created with geo layers. Oh, well, that's always kind of cool to be able to know. But it's like not under the sale, so sorry. It's not under the sale. Um, <laughs> as I said, everything is still for sale, though. Um, and by all means, <laughs> hop on whatever you want. Um, it's kind of one of those things you, you know, you show up to the mall just to look for the sale, and then you end up being like, Oh, I want that too. I want that. Um, but there are plenty of things also on here where you can um, save some money and uh, get some bundles and really experiment with some new plugins. Um, we do tomorrow have another stream. We're streaming every single day this week um, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a bunch of guests next. Uh, and then the next stream on tomorrow, um, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up the schedule for it so I can give you exact names for it. Um, but tomorrow we have Gabriel Grenier, Alex Zichenko, Alan Fregment, and Zach Lovett. And we'll be going through very similar to how we were going through the plugins with Mike today, um, the use cases of the plugins, uh, what they're really strong for, some recommendations, lesser known stuff. Um, and then, of course, also just highlighting what we can. Um, because we want you guys to have nice and informed information before you go and you buy these plugins. Um, just because obviously the, the the end result is what is in mind. And we want to make sure that when you go to buy a plugin, it's something that will actually value you. And um, got a lot of really great resources uh, coming up in the sale. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely demo a bio layer sculptor. We'll have to figure out when to do that. Maybe oh we'll yeah, for John, the yeah. the bow layer sculpture. Bow across the board has so much offering for this sale yeah. in particular, um, and they're one of the ones where it's like kind of similar to joysticks and sliders, where you can get it and you just can continuously learn more and more and more about how deep those products can go and how resourceful they can be. They have a few 
um, bundles as well, where you can save on top of the savings. Um, so make sure you check out the Bell plugins, but we'll make sure that we go over them um, probably either sometime on Thursday or Friday. And Bao is another example of um, the, the developer. He's a filmmaker, actually, and he just happens to be a very technically minded filmmaker. And so he's created all his plugins because he used the plugins to create things for, you know, scenes for his films. So it's also very, they're all battle tested things. I mean, I want to be like that, though. I want to just like have an issue and be like technically inclined enough to just be like, boom, all right, here is an industry changing yeah. solution. <laughs> uh, you'd be, you'd be, I mean, I, I was not trained as a programmer and I figured it out, you know, and it's, I think if you're really interested in something um, and you're motivated enough, you can make anything happen, baby. <laughs> Which also also comes from the man that has not only created uh, dozens of plugins, but has also created a website that has changed what we expect out of downloading plugins from rather than thousands of dollars <laughs> to just like a couple dozen. <laughs> so. Necessity is the mother of all inventions, Ryan. I mean, this is very true. It's very true. Um, but I think that pretty much covers everything that we've got for today, uh, unless you have any closing words that you want to touch on uh, particularly. No, thanks to you. Uh, yeah. I'm very grateful for uh, having you uh, lead this for us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a pleasure of mine to host as a, uh, a, of course. I mean, it's something that I, I love doing and um, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the week. So, um, oh, Tom says joysticks and sliders is fantastic. Use it all the time. Absolutely, 100% agree. It is on sale if you don't um, already have it, if you're watching. Um, and yeah, let us know if you guys peruse through the, uh, the list of sales and have any questions in the coming days, uh, we'd be happy to address them and show some demos on stream. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, and here is your outro followed by the advertisement that was beautifully created. Who created the um, animation for it, by the way? Duo team. They Duo are team? Awesome. Yeah, at, uh, go to, I think it's duo.team, I think is the URL. Duo team. They did a phenomenal that. job, um, and it's the coolest thing ever with the whole They, they created both the last year's and this year. Yeah, duo.team. Duo.team. All right. Well, make sure you guys check them out. All right. Have a good one. Thank you to everyone. I guess I should run through real quick. Um, thank you to Annika, to Gareth, Jack, Jess, Katarina, Randall, Ryan, um, Tom, John, Ivan, uh, Ali, Cubertoy, Ryan, Joel, Moyne, Abbas, and Carl. Thank you guys for all keeping us um, company in the chat. Of course, uh, thank you also to all the lurkers too. Uh, it's great to have you guys and uh, we hope to see you soon. All right, have a good one. Thank you.